Pocus Doom is the reason why I love the modding community so much. I mean, only with modders could you ever get something like this. A cross between a game like Doom and then a game like Hocus Pocus, a somewhat obscure and lesser known platformer from 1994 developed by Moonlight Software. If you never heard of those guys, well, that's fine. I mean, they didn't really seem to do all that much aside from making Hocus Pocus and another platformer called Clyde's Adventure, but Hocus Pocus was the one they're most well known for. The story for the original game goes that you're playing as the eponymous Hocus, a young wizard sent on a quest by his master to prove his worth. Which basically meant he had to go through a series of challenging realms, taking on dragons, ghosts and crocodiles, collecting treasure and finding magic crystals. It was super colourful, smooth to control and it had great sound and music, the only thing was that it was hard as balls. I never actually finished the full game as a kid, but I can vividly remember spending an entire weekend trying to finish the shareware version on my dad's Commodore 486 back during the school holidays. Even now, it still holds up surprisingly well as a platformer, but it definitely feels like a game made in 1994. The only downside to it was that it was one of those games where if you died, you'd have to restart the entire level from scratch, which is something that always pissed me off. Commander Keen 4 came out three years prior and you could save and load from anywhere in a level with that game anytime you wanted. Thankfully, you don't have to put up with that in Hocus Doom and can just save whenever you want. Now, in terms of the breakdown of the game, when it comes to the mechanics and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty damn close to what the original DOS version pulled off. And you're gonna see the same looking abilities, enemies, sprites, and textures carried pretty much right across and brought to life with the Doom engine. Well, the GZ Doom engine anyway. It's kind of like the Metroid Prime of Doom mods, similar to how Metroid Prime was a perfect translation of 2D to 3D from Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo. The mod is broken up into four episodes, just like the four episodes in the original game. You've got Time Tripping, Shattered Worlds, Warped and Weary, and then Destination Home. Each episode has eight levels and one secret level, with each two levels following a similar theme. The goal of each of them is to find a bunch of magic crystals which are scattered throughout, and once you find all of them, the level comes to an end. Along with this, you kill everything that gets in your way and collect a king's ransom in treasure. You don't need to collect this stuff though, it just affects your score if that's something you really care about. Pretty much all of the themes are copied from the DOS version, just in different orders. And you'll move through ice and snow covered environments, taking on Eskimos and penguins. There's Egyptian themed levels where your enemies are mummies, scorpions and bats. Then there's a medieval looking forest with evil trees and flying devils and then spooky haunted castles with skeletons and ghosts. These are probably my favourite areas just because of how silly and cartoonish the whole thing is. And I like the way the skeletons bones all fly out in this little arc when you kill them. I mean it definitely gets points for just how unique it is. And you know the guy who's made all of this is an old DOS games fan too. One of the secret levels uses all of the sprites and music from Jill of the Jungle, even down to the cheesy sound effects. It's amazing. Yeah. If that ain't enough, there's even a Jazz Jackrabbit secret level with the same sprites, music, and even an attempt to replicate the different ammo types. This makes a pretty compelling argument too that Jazz Jackrabbit would have made a pretty good first person shooter, because this whole segment is just awesome. Then there's all the other small things like coming across BJ from Wolfenstein 3D frozen in a block of ice, or a treasure pickup using a sprite from Rise of the Triad. It's really what makes the whole thing so charming is this constant shift in art styles, as well as just preventing boredom because you're always coming up against something new. There are those odd generic sort of fantasy themes which do get recycled, but there's still a pretty good job to make sure things don't feel too samey. And it makes it a lot more enjoyable to play, even if it is just the same locations from the original game. Now, instead of having health and armor like Doom Guy did, Hocus instead only has 10 hit points, no armor. Once those hit points are gone, it's game over Sunny Jim. Every hit you take from an enemy knocks off a health point, and you can only refill these by finding health potions. Now this might seem kinda tough, but it's really not when you think about it. I mean, you're basically able to survive 10 hits before dying. Assuming of course you're playing on moderate difficulty, which is challenging enough, believe me. There's only a couple of times where you really struggle to get by on health points, but these are deliberate design choices for specific levels, so mostly it's pretty generous. 
Enemies in the mod are either melee or ranged, or a combination of both. Melee enemies can fire projectiles pretty quickly, but the projectiles move really slowly, giving you a lot of time to get the hell out of the way. Things start off pretty chill, but towards the end of the mod, you'll be entering rooms and taking on dozens of enemies at once, and again like the original, enemies usually spawn in at key points, so you never know what you're up against until it materializes right in front of you. Pocus doesn't have access to all that many spells, being the scrub that he is, so he's basically limited to just throwing lightning bolts at things, which he fires from his hands. A hand sprite which is quite obviously Daedalon's hands from Hexen. I mean, go and take a look at the sprite for Frost Shards and tell me they're not exactly the same. At first, this attack does seem pretty piss weak, but as you explore each level, you find additional firepower that allows you to fire off more shots before having to wait for your energy to recharge, up to a total of 10 shots maximum. The only problem with this is that to fire quickly you have to repeatedly press the left mouse button, you can't just hold it down. So I got a sore finger from playing this than I got from that cab ride downtown with your mum. It's the power ups you get though which helps to mix up the combat a bit more and make it a bit more fun. Not to mention just showing off lots of neat little particle effects. For starters you get one which gives you rapid fire, allowing you to fire off this unlimited stream of bolts which lasts about 30 seconds or so. This was one of the most common ones you'd come across in the DOS version, and again, it's pretty damn useful. It's just this constant stream of firepower that can schwack anything that ends up in front of it. Then there's one which lets you fire off two shots at once instead of one. There's another one which shoots out a whole bunch in a small spread, and then one that almost functions like a rocket launcher. Launching out a single projectile that explodes, then fires off more projectiles in all directions. Probably one of the better ones is the Fireball, which is another one returning from the DOS version. You only get three shots for this, but you can just decimate entire groups of enemies. One of the last ones you get is almost like a railgun. Now this one fires out a single accurate projectile that does a lot of damage, and can again pierce through multiple enemies like the Fireball. There's an even better power-up in the fourth episode, which turns your attack into basically a goddamn flamethrower. Why they hid this thing away for so long until the fourth episode, I've got no idea. But it's definitely one of the most fun power-ups in the entire mod. Late in the third episode, you'll also get your hands on the Power Wand, which is the only other real weapon aside from Hocus's spells. With this thing, you can swap back and forth between two fire modes, either firing off rapid energy at once or a supercharged up shot, kind of like a railgun. Energy for this bad boy slowly recharges over time, so it never runs out. But like all of the other upgrades, whenever you finish a level, they take it all away from you, and you're back to square one. When you use this thing with the rapid fire power up, it just becomes laughably overpowered. The staff just fires out this constant stream of energy, reminding me a bit of the lightning gun from Quake, and it even melts boss enemies in seconds. If that all ain't enough, you can also throw out little bombs, which also does really good damage. You don't get too many of these things, and most of the time they're put in out of the way spots but they become really effective in a pinch when you just want to make sure that every motherfucker in the room disappears in a flash. Part of what helps this mod too is that the controls are just super smooth. I mean, this might be some of the smoothest platforming controls I've ever seen in the Doom engine. The original Hocus Pocus was a combination of platforming and shooting shit, and that's exactly what Hocus Doom is carried across. You'll be doing plenty of jumping around in this game, leaping from floating platform to platform, avoiding dangerous spikes which jut out of the ground or pools of lava, acid and mountain dew. There's a really high amount of air control too, which means that if you over jump something, you can easily correct your trajectory in midair without all that much of an issue. It also serves a bit of a purpose during combat because aside from simply circle strafing to avoid damage, you can quite often literally just jump over projectiles. Again, kind of mirroring the original game and its 2D platforming nature. And it makes it feel a lot more skill-based than just relying on circle strafing all the time. After a while, the controls become second nature and you'll forget you're playing a first-person shooter running in the Doom engine because of just how mobile it is. Hocus Doom is a super long mod too, like maybe too long. All up, there's four episodes in total, comprised of eight levels each. And if you manage to find that secret level each time, well, that's another four levels in total. If you're gonna do what I did and try to find all of the secrets and treasure, well, you're looking at about two to three hours per episode, if not longer. The final level of each episode also usually has a bunch of mini boss enemies. And of course, there's a final boss for the last level. So all up, it's a shitload of content. 
I don't usually like trying to look for faults in free mods, unless these faults are blatantly obvious and stick out like a dog's balls. But more so, especially for a mod like this that's just clearly had so much work put into it, and offers up arguably more value than modern commercially available first person shooters. I mean, even if they charge money for this thing, it'd honestly be money well spent. This feels like it could be a commercial product and I'd have no problem with that. I think my only issue lies with the original Hocus Pocus and what's being carried over into the mod. And that's this whole mechanic of the way that enemies just spawn in all the time. Now, I understand that was how it worked in the original game. You'd run through a level and enemies would kind of materialize in front of you. This would often be done to trap the player. They'd wait until you jumped over some kind of ledge or landed in a spot that really wasn't in your best interests. In the original game though, because it was a side scroller, you could often see it happen before you got too close. But because of how fast Doom plays and the insanely high movement speed you've got, you'll often be running through a level full tilt and enemies are going to pretty much spawn on top of you. This is an issue because simply touching an enemy is enough for them to damage you. It just means you have to kind of edge your way through rooms a bit, waiting for enemies to fully spawn in and systematically taking them out. It all works in the sense that it's trying to replicate the gameplay for the original, but it doesn't really work as well as preset enemies would. Honestly, look, it's not a huge complaint, but it does detract a fair bit from the run again aspect of the mod. Lastly, I do think a lot of the charm of this mod is banking on whether or not you play the original game or anything else that it references. A couple of the secret levels I had no idea what they were supposed to be based off. The novelty of those environments wasn't lost on me, but it wasn't the same reaction I had compared to coming across the Jazz Jackrabbit or Jill of the Jungle level. Still, I'm stunned at just how much fun this mod turned out to be. But the fact of the matter is, is that I never really played Hocus Pocus all that much, or even really found it all that enjoyable, even in its heyday. So, for this mod, which is based off that, to still somehow captivate me, speaks volumes I think about how good the mod really is. The modding community proves once again just how good it is at pulling something off in its spare time, and for little to no cash incentives, than what most big budget AAA developers can do with lengthy development cycles and a team of people behind them. So I gotta say, all up, damn good stuff sir. Now all we need is Hentai Hocus Doom and the circuit will be complete. Nani?